being in the healthcare sector in the middle of the COVID crisis was challenging, but somehow rewarding. As a team, we learned so much. We've grown so much. And our vision of healthcare is somehow different. So how COVID-19 has influenced the healthcare revolution trajectory? What next for the sector? Tonight, I have decided to cover two ideas that are important for me. The first one is the human resource challenge in the sector. It's a global and fundamental issue. The second idea is the digitalization of healthcare as a solution for the future. We all heard about the great resignation. All sector combined, we think that one out of five employees will quit their job in 2022. In healthcare, things were taken for granted. As patients, we expect when, what, when we go to hospital, there will be a nurse and there will be a doctor. But since COVID, we realize that nurses and doctors are just human beings like us. Some were scared, scared for themselves, but were forced to come to work and then decided to leave the boat. Others were not scared. In fact, they are trained to face those kind of infection risk. But they were scared for their loved one, their kids, their partners, their relatives, scared to bring that COVID back at home. Others were neither scared for themselves nor scared for their family. But they had to juggle with kids at home, relatives at home, a very difficult logistic period for them. So the great resignation in the nursing community is estimated to be at 30%, 10% more than all other sectors. It's a global and fundamental issue, cannot be fixed within, within weeks. It takes three to three years and a half to train a quality nurse. As it's a global issue, the problem is that some country can compensate. The rich country will just attract nurses from the poor country. They pay higher salary, and there's a musical chair which is happening. Mauritian nurses are going to the UK, to Canada, to Dubai. Indian nurses coming to Mauritius and then going to the, to the north. This is not sustainable. To overcome this, public and private institution needs to put their minds together. We need to modify our policies. We need to encourage vocation, encourage the number of training institutions. The increase in number of traditional nursing schools will help, but the real breakthrough will come for the digitalization of nursing training. Efficient online courses, digital labs, and mannequin robotized to simulate human body. A US firm has created a robot, an artificially connected robot, that is simulated the reaction of the human body when cardiopulmonary resuscitation is done. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation is massage cardiac. There's a very specific technique. The depth, the, the speed, the rhythm, of the compression is very important. So this robot, with all the sensors connected to a, a software, will give live data to the student for the student to adapt. This company wants to train one million nurses in the coming years. Another ex example is Victoria. Victoria is a female robot. She's artificially intelligent also. In fact, 
she can simulate woman delivery. When you train a nurse or a doctor, you need to put that person in front of experience, real life experience, and it can take weeks before you come over different kind of scenario. What Victoria does, she is putting those students under very different scenarios, accelerating their experience. Digital training of nurses is very important for the future of healthcare. The second idea is the digitalization of healthcare. Healthcare is, in fact, a deep human to human science. To be treated by a doctor or a nurse, you need to be touched, you need to be listened. You need to be observed, to be felt. So where to place digital in all of this? In fact, during the pandemic in developed countries, we estimate that 30% of general consultation were in fact done through teleconsultation. It was estimated at 1% pre-COVID. So what COVID has done, it has pushed on the accelerator of digitalization of healthcare. Well, you will tell me phone uh, consultation is easy. But in fact, there was a great patient resistance that COVID had helped to overcome. Also, doctor resistance, and maybe a third element, is the payer, the insurance resistance. Pre-COVID, only a few insurance companies were reimbursing teleconsultation. Now, at least in developed countries, most of them are willing to reimburse a teleconsultation. Teleconsultation can be just a phone call, not very innovative, you would tell me. But in fact, today, researchers and healthcare companies are developing videos connected to medical devices so that a patient can give life vitals to a doctor, which is geographically separated. Besides, algorithms are also different. We need predictive algorithm. We need AI so that the algorithm can predict what will be the answer. If this was not done pre-COVID, during COVID, we had no clue about the question and no clue about the answer. So those algorithms need to be intelligent to be able to learn by themselves. Why is it important for healthcare? First, digital healthcare is an assistant to the nurses and the doctors. It helps to reduce the errors, to speed up the diagnostic time, and then the treatment. By speeding up the diagnostic and reducing the errors, it's in fact reducing the cost of healthcare. When we push it even further, it can connect around the world people that are completely remote, having no access to very basic healthcare support to be connected to a doctor. Or, for example, for us in Mauritius, to be connected to super specialists that are located in the US, in the UK, to treat us in Mauritius. If we even push it further, we, are, can, we can go through telesurgery. It already exists, but not very much democratized. And COVID-19 has also put an accelerator in the telesurgery possibilities. So you can imagine an artificially intelligent robot in Mauritius, where your doctor in the UK, your surgeon in the UK, and your treater and you are going under surgery in Mauritius. It exists, it exists in the US, it exists in some developed country, and it will come one day, I hope, in Mauritius. So why, for me, this is so important? It's because healthcare is not evenly distributed in the world. The rich and the poorest country are not treated the same way. Digital nursing training and digital healthcare, we, allow, we will allow to really give access to healthcare 
to poor people and remote area in the world and also reduce cost. It's the future of our healthcare. Thank you.